Welcome everyone to another episode here in Eat Sleep Reef. We got a ton to cover. This week we had coral to the tank, so the time has come to finally add coral. You may recognize a few pieces as they're from the old JBJ that have been babysitting with a few neighbors, a few local reefers. We also install the random flow generators by VCA, which I'm pretty sure you guys already have heard of. We install a couple of those on the Waterbox 180. And lastly, probably something you already saw with the intro, I somehow find myself getting into 3D printers all over again. Let's check it out. Just got a package in from VCA. Of course, we could not forget random flow generator, the adapter to convert from my metric Norlock to the standard uh, Norlock. You can actually see the conversions there. I also wanted to try out their new vacuum attachment. This one is actually made to work with the CJ Nano as well as working with the maxi jet and various other uh, pumps out there so this is going to be really cool i actually already have used this product i just never made a youtube video on it not this specific one it was on a buddy's tank and i really loved it so i'm glad to be able to run it on this new tank got the adapter fully pushed in it was actually a lot easier than i thought if i can't say anything when you're pressing the inserts in i wouldn't hold it from the top i'd hold it from the base and make sure it's like on a table or a solid surface and it should butt up right against it. Got them both mounted in already. It's actually pretty easy to do it by hand. The stock water box just kind of snap right off. And then while holding the back of the VCA, I was able to get it to slip on really easily. The only issue I did find, I'm gonna actually have to order a longer one of these uh, Nord locks, I think they're called, because you can see it's pretty close to the surface. So I'm almost positive when I start running them, uh, they're gonna pull in air. You can see it's pretty much right at the surface. I mean, we'll see right now when we start it up. Surprisingly, they're actually not pulling in any air. I let them run for about two minutes. It's really cool when you put your hand in front of it, you can actually feel it sending the flow from different uh, different directions. But yeah, I mean, I'll probably still end up getting some, um, some more of the, uh, the lock line, I believe it's called, just so I can angle them a little bit out and towards the glass over here more. Because if I notice, if I lift them up a little bit more, they'll start pulling air. So yeah, I guess if you do order this for your water box, you can get away with the stock ones, although I at least suggest you ordering um, just another run of at least six of the balls so you can put three on this side and three on that side and then you'll be uh, you'll be done today is going to be the day we add some of the first corals going in now a lot of these corals you guys may recognize from the jbj no matter where you're getting your corals from i always recommend a dip because then at that point you really have no one to blame but yourself if something does get in the tank now for the water box 180 i'm be doing a little bit more of an extensive dip if you will it's going to start with a coral rx I've showed this container, the one where I drilled the holes, and it's pretty much, this is gonna have the dipping solution, and then I'm kinda gonna be wringing it out and forcing all the water to the coral and the frag plug to hopefully get everything off of it. These two containers are gonna have water directly from the tank. Once we're done in here, we go into here, observe it, look at it, scrub the frag plug, the base of the coral as much as I can. Once we're happy with this, we'll move that over and then we'll move into this one here. And this one, performing the same thing, inspect it, look at it, scrub it again. And then from this point, we can transfer it into the tank. Now, even with me doing all of this, it's still not 100% guaranteed to get everything off of it. There still is a chance anytime you're not quarantining your coral. Me, I really just don't plan on quarantining coral. I feel like the fish already is enough for me. Here are the corals. There's quite a few different ones. I won't go into detail of dipping every single one. I'll just show you on one of them, and then we'll be able to add them inside the tank. One cap full of Coral RX. And then we have the two clean containers in the back. So we'll grab a few of the Zoas. I've showed this dipping contraption before. Again, it's two containers. The top one has holes in it and it's able to force water over the coral, under the coral, pretty much all around it. In my opinion, it's a little bit more efficient than a turkey baster. Uh, not just more efficient, I feel it's also a bit more gentle as I can feel the turkey baster with certain corals. You can actually do a little bit more damage than good. All right, done with the dip. Now put them in clean water from the tank. So next, just scrub 
the base. It's obviously not guaranteed, but if there's any eggs of ick or any parasite on there, it should hopefully remove it. And then it goes into the next clean water. And you repeat the same thing for all of them. You can get this one out of the way. And this last one, repeat the same steps. So this is the last container they're gonna go in. Well, next, just repeat the same thing for the rest of your corals. All right, here's the first one. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. So here's a torch. Put it there, and then kind of the rest of them, I set them here on the bottom till I'm able to see the colors on like the zoas, chalices, and then the gani. Put it right there on the left side. So we'll see how it all looks once they get really happy. I also got a mushroom, but it's hard to see. It's back there, low flow, low light. So hopefully it does pretty good. One week later. Uh, yesterday, uh, I mentioned I did a live stream on Instagram. Uh, there was quite a bit of, of diatom bloom that uh, I was having pop up. It pretty much started when the lights came on, as it's to, supposed to be expected. You can kind of still see some on the rock. Uh, but yeah, the sand bed looked nothing like it looks today. And that's what I tell a lot of people with diatoms, you know, just keep everything normal. Don't overfeed. Keep your nutrients in check. Obviously not too low either. Uh, but just keep everything in check. I mean, if something does get out of whack, do a quick water change to get you back on track. Generally speaking, diatoms should disappear within a few days. I think in this tank, they lasted really, really bad on the sand bed for about three days. And yeah, I should have done the video yesterday. But you can see now it's it, they're really broken up. Here, I actually don't even see any of it. Um, I see a little bit. Actually, no, nothing on this side. So yeah, they're, the only spots I see, there's a spot back there. And mainly uh, the spots you can see here, the camera's kind of having a hard time to get them. And also, you can see them very, very briefly on the rocks themselves. What I did notice is here on the bottom, I'm running the sock just momentarily. I'm not gonna have any socks once the tank is stocked and everything, but I noticed the sock itself was actually really clean for about a week and a half. And so was the skimmer. The skimmer wasn't really pulling out anything. I've seen the sand bit clear up. What a coincidence that now I'm seeing the sock. As you guys can see here is quite dirty. And of course the skimmer is just pulling some really nasty skimmate out. You can see here. So it's a good sign. It's not a bad sign. Uh, more importantly, it shows us a tank is slowly, slowly, slowly maturing, uh, slowly getting stabilized. And really, all I could say is on the right track. Here is a three printer I ordered. It is the Ender by Creality 3 V2. We got the Nova Maker filament. I actually ordered PETG in a really nice, you kind of see, it's almost like a, I don't know, like a fluorescent blue. It's really nice. Also went ahead and ordered the Capricorn tubing with the metal, um, I forget what they're called, but the little metal holders to ensure that the uh, tubing itself doesn't come out. Oh yeah, it's actually, the insert's really nice. Oh, you gotta love the smell of China. <sighs> so here we get the user manual. You can see it's the Ender 3V2, the upgraded motherboard, the quiet uh, motors and glass bed. I mean, the, the whole nine yards. You could also adjust in the tensioners here. Get the hot end with the cooling fan. Well, this thing is really nice actually. In person, it's super nice. So what there is to do now is assemble it and really hopefully start printing with it. The past few days, I've been learning how to do design through Fusion 360, and we got the slicer here. I will say it was a little bit of a learning curve. It wasn't super difficult, but actually, you know, something I've come to really enjoy. What this is, it's a mount for my booster pump power supply. We've got the four holes, as well as a place so you can put a Velcro strap through the bottom. A few other designs I've done is this filter cup, and the way I made it, one thing I didn't like from all the other filter cups on the market is these relief cuts on the side. I feel they're either too high 
they're too big so essentially what happens is it actually starts overflowing through the relief cuts before it's forced to go through the bottom now the benefit or at least in concept in my mind at least of running one just like you see here having the relief cut relief cut smaller and on the bottom accompanied with these holes down here is you're able to put filter floss or any type of pad on the top carbon and gfo on the bottom so all the water is absolutely forced to go straight through the bottom so it can accidentally come out before it actually reaches this bottom section i also designed these hooks and these hooks are made for your sump i'm sure we all have a sump that there's water trickling over or creating a waterfall effect obviously that translates to noise right so with this hook you're able to strap it to your glass or acrylic sump and then on this bottom hook you're able to put a piece of foam that attaches here so you no longer have to hear the water splashing i guess you could use the same on your overflow on the top it actually would work now that i think about it and lastly is the mount for the uv sterilizer now this guys i'm not gonna lie this took me about three to four days to make and the way it works it obviously is made to hold down the uv sterilizer uh, there's going to be four holes on the base to mount it there's going to be one hole here so you can screw it down with the thumb screw and on this side which was what took me forever design is a hinge that the whole top piece is going to uh, rotate on so this will allow you to do maintenance on your uv sterilizer and i mean in design it looks really well we'll see what it comes out to in practice So in concept, it seemed to all be right. All the measurements were dead on. And for you guys that didn't quite understand why I made it, this is a booster pump for the RODI system. And this thing was here on the ground. And the other day I had the water overfill and I got super scared. So what I did, I threw a piece of wood in the back so it could be elevated. But I was like, you know what? I need to design something so I can mount it to a wall, mount it to the side frame here, or pretty much wherever I want to. So this is the Velcro strap that goes through here i already checked it the tolerances are dead on i checked the tolerances for the screws last to check is to see if the pump will even fit on it oh god look at that fits like a glove so now i can mount the base of it put the strap around it and this thing is not going anywhere yeah so here's the cup now let's just bring it to life print is almost done as you can see it here coming together. There is about 11 more minutes left on it. Just got six of these Ecotech mounts printed out. You can see here what they look like. Actually, it came out really nice. Really happy with it. This is obviously going to be used to mount the controllers for MP40s, MP10s, and MP60s. So that's going to conclude this week's episode, guys. I know we cover a lot. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them down below. If you guys did stay till the very end to watch every single bit of this video, please let me know. Also, let me know what you think about the 3D printer. I've actually uh, previously had some experience with it. This is my first experience actually learning to design stuff. Uh, it was a learning curve as you guys saw, but I'm really happy I was able to do that. So yeah, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on 3D printers. Maybe you own some. I really can't wait for the next Sunday's video. It's gonna be time to be adding fish to the tank. So I really can't wait. So thank you guys again very much for joining in. If you aren't subscribed, please be sure to subscribe. If I earned a like, I appreciate those very much. As always guys, thanks for watching. Happy reefing.